Hello Art 1. We are going on to our third sampling of abstraction. We're going to look at the artist Helen Frankenthaler. She is also an abstract expressionist. She falls under that kind of umbrella. Uh, but specifically, she started the style of painting called color field painting. She's from New York, and um, she's really interesting, actually. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit, but for now, this is uh, one of her paintings. I'll get out of the way. Um, and she just uses shapes of color, or fields of color, if you will, and there are a lot of other color field painters. But sometimes people have trouble maybe appreciating or accessing this style of painting. But what I like about non-representative work is that it can be whatever you want. Right? You can interpret it how you like. I've seen, I've heard students say that this is a bird. Somebody recently said it's a ship. I can see that too. The sea, the ocean, and this would be the ship. I think of it as more of a landscape and mountains. But it can be any of those things. Or, and more. So here's a couple more of her pieces. And we can just appreciate these for the formal elements as well. We don't have to find something in there to appreciate them. We can just look at the colors. This blue-gray next to the orange next to the pink. The negative space that those shapes create. The edges. I think her, her, her watercolors, or no, her, well, they're not watercolors, they're thinned oil paints, but the edges are always very interesting. Just this line with the yellow, the strong green lines, and then that orange there. It looks random, doesn't it? And it's somewhat random, but all of these lines, shapes, colors, values, textures, those are all choices. So your job is going to be to create your own color field painting, something inspired by color field. We're going to use the tempera paint, but in more of a watercolor style. Now, we're not trying to get it so thick. You want to, and you can choose, is your composition going to be more unified, or is it going to be more varied? How will you balance your composition? There's a lot of nice texture in here, isn't there? Some washed out colors, some thicker colors. They balanced it by having the same amount of white on each side, the same amount of the darker values, although they're different colors. This is more of a Kenneth Nolan style. We have the shapes, more specific shapes. Again, look at the textures. Look at the edges. The edges are so nice. Unified by shape. Unified by value and texture. And the variation of color. Complementary colors here. Like, Look at the effect of the, the orange and the blue next to each other. Very powerful. Okay. So be playful. Get your tempera, we need some water, and the watercolor paper. So that's the very white paper that has a texture on it. And now, again, we're not using thick paint necessarily. You might get to some of that, but mostly we're going to start out with a wash. And that means using a lot of color, or a lot of paint, I'm sorry, and a little, <laughs> a lot of water and a little bit of paint. So think of what mood you want to begin. Okay, what do you what's the feeling? 
Now we happen to have some warm days recently, so I've been I want something warm and sunny. That's what I'm thinking of. Kind of that fall afternoon. So I'm starting with a yellow. It reminds me of the sun. It's, it's a warm color. Let's work with that and see what happens. Now I get what I had some sharp angles, and I thought, well, I don't want it to be angular and aggressive, right? I want some soft shapes instead, so I need to go back and fix those. Okay, so I washed off this pattern and again. It's I'm just kind of being free. It's it's a start. I don't have a super set plan. Then I decide I want some. I put a little wash of yellow on the bottom, and I want orange. So I'm washing some red on top of that, trying to make some orange. It's kind of worked. Now I need to think about balancing this out, though. If I have orange on the bottom, I'm probably going to need something on the top to balance that. I'm, now I'm going for something, I, because the bottom didn't give me the orange I wanted, now I'm going to mix it separate and then I'm going to try that. There we go. So I just did it kind of energetically putting it on there. All right, so if I want an energetic feeling, I use energetic brush strokes. If I want a soft feeling, I can use softer brush strokes and wash it out more. I'm going to put a blue background in here because I'm thinking of a kind of a sky-like feeling. Now I'm using some darker colors. Right? I'm kicking it up a notch here, bringing this red in there. Look at how powerful that is. Right? That's very strong. So I'm definitely going to need to balance that out. All the attention is going to go to that red. It's a darker value than I have everywhere else. So I'm going to add some red. There you go. So that's an it's starting to balance. I still think that red on the bottom is dominant. But that's alright, I'll get to that. I'm putting some orange in here. Getting this fire feeling. And now I want to balance this. The bottom is definitely the strongest, the heaviest part. It's got all the visual weight. So how can I do something to bring your attention to the top? I'm going to put something totally new in there. Yeah, that didn't work like I wanted. I want a dark blue, like a line of blue. There we go. That's better. All right, so I'm going to get that line in there. There we go. That definitely draws some attention to the top, but now I think, well, maybe I need a little blue in the bottom. Put a little blue in the middle, too. Now the middle looks a little weak compared to the bottom, so I'm going to get some nice thick yellow. Boom. Add a little yellow to the top as well. Look at that. Boom. It's coming alive. <laughs> it's got some energy there. So I'm just playing around, trying to make, I want each part to be equally interesting. I don't want one part to be dominant. So each element needs to kind of assert itself. And then I decided that, like, that, that blue background, I want more of a warm feeling. So I just went over it with yellow. Like I wasn't 100% sure it was going to work. So I'm using a washed yellow over that, and it worked fine. Right, you have to take some chances here. It's a little kind of a yellow green in places. There's some touch ups now. I want it to be even darker. There you go. Look at that. See? Just a little darker on top. The little things can make such a difference. That line is awesome. And there we go. There's my, there's my kind of color field inspired painting. Well, mine's a little linear than most color field paintings, but that's all right. Now I'm going to think of a name for it. I was thinking of a sunny day, but it ended up looking like fire kind of in there, right? I was thinking of fall. I got fall colors, so the name will be... I'm going to call this Firefall. Yeah, there you go. So that is my...
color field painting. Um, and there's an infinite number of options for you. You do not have to do yours like mine in any way, shape, or form. Is this recording? Hello. Let's go to... I'm going to pause it, but apparently it's not getting me that option. I'll show, oh, no, 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 abstraction. Where's color field? Color field, C, student work. All right, so here's some examples. I mean, this one's awesome. <laughs> Look at that. It's so energetic. But they were really smart that they just used blue and black. If they had used a lot of different colors, it would just get to chaotic, right? Saw that one. Saw this one's nice. Look at that. This is very color field, right? Kind of landscapey, washed out. I'm using some tape to tape off areas. This is very color field with just a little bit of action, that textural background. This is really interesting to me. Very different. Again, this is, yeah, this is nice textural, landscapey. So, you know, play around. Uh, whatever you're feeling will be good. I just got to figure out how to turn the video off. Yeah, you're done. Everybody's done. Better have recorded. It's recording. Come on, little guy, where are you? Yeah, you can stop watching now. Is it not recording? Oh. It is recording. 